Here we go. My favorite time of the week. It is Cooper Mays, and he's a captain for the game, which is nothing new. I'm sure he's been a captain before, but we love visiting with the captain right here. It is uh, the Ball Report brought to you by City Heat and Air Conditioning, cityheatandair.com. And Cooper, I'm curious, do you know, because you were named captain for the Florida game, do you even know how many times you've been named captain, how many times you've gone out there? Um, no, I, I don't. I do not. <laughs> so you're almost, you're to the point where you're just kind of, deca- you're the, the captain de facto, where they can always turn. You've you've hit that new leadership role. We've got to come up with a new name for that. El Capitan. <laughs> John, I like it. Uh, how, how important has leadership been, both you and internally? I know things didn't go the way you wanted to them. Uh, to uh, against Arkansas, but um, how important is internal leadership right now? It's uh, it's really big. You know, I think the biggest thing is just continuing to to have the energy to improve each and every week. You know, it's a hard time in college football. Everybody right now is starting to feel it, and you know, the the people that are gonna are gonna be better in the long run are the people that improve each and every week. So. Just trying to trying to make sure everybody's keeping their, you know, the energy right. Make sure it's exactly where it needs to be. How would you describe practice this week as far as the energy level? It was great, great energy. Good deal. And uh, how would you describe? You know, there's some guys. I, I'm not going to go name and names, but you you know where the struggles were. Um, How's the confidence level with those with some of those guys that maybe didn't play their best? Um, should be good. I mean, the the biggest thing to 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 having performances that you maybe didn't didn't like or weren't proud of is that you get a whole week. You know, you get five straight days of of opportunities to go out there and right your wrongs and and improve stuff and get ready for the next week. So that's that's all we've been focused on is just getting better. Uh, I think a couple of people have mentioned in press conferences how Nico took the loss really hard, which, I mean, you all take the loss really hard. But I think that coming from California, people wonder what he knows about uh, the SEC. But how would you describe his his reaction to the loss? I would say uh, pretty, pretty regular. I mean, everybody's, like you said, everybody's going to be upset. I don't know if he took it any different or harder than anybody else. I mean, if you aren't, if you aren't super upset after a loss like that, then you're probably not in the right spot, you know? Yeah. Well said. All right, let's roll ahead to Florida. Um, As to me, I remember what I would say the glory days of of the rivalry, um, which is uh, admittedly I'm old. Um, But what do you remember of, of the Tennessee Florida rivalry when you're a young guy coming up, any, any games stand out in particular? I think the biggest, the biggest thing that kind of springs forth when I think about it is the matchups between like Eric Berry and, and Tim Tebow. I mean, I think that was probably, I don't know exactly what years those were, but it was when I was a young guy, you know, just, just starting to get to the point where I, you know, was able to be aware and, and know what was going on and, know what football was and everything. I think that was that was probably the coolest time. I mean, those are two two big time guys going up against each other. So that was the uh that's probably the biggest thing I remember. Yeah, and I'm sure you remember the hit um went down in the swamp. What do you remember about that when Eric Berry came up with the big stop? Yeah, it's huge, man. I mean I I definitely, you know, if I was the DB, I wouldn't want to tackle Tim Tebow at that time. You know, that's a big dude. So uh hats off to hats off to him. Yeah, that was uh, it's pretty impressive. Um, have, have have you spent much time around Eric Berry or or any former balls that um, you think have have kind of provided leadership even after their career? Obviously, your dad. But um, aside from that, um, I, I I have there. It's it's hard. It's hard, really, because you know everybody's super busy with their own lives and they've got so much stuff going on that it's hard to to really make it back. And then when you do make it back, you're, you're not, you're probably trying to more just enjoy it and take it in rather than, you know, be out there being a leader and, and, you know, all that other stuff. But 
you know, there's been there's been a couple guys. I know Eric Berry came back when he got honored that one time. Um, came over and had some really good words for the team and everything. Everybody that comes back that that does play, I think our coaching staff does a really good job of giving them a platform and an opportunity to speak because I think our coaches really respect that. You know, they they they're the guys that built this place at the end of the day, and you know, that that that's something that will last longer than anybody else and anything that will that's there right now. You know. Yeah, you're you guys are helping build qu quite a bit. I'm sure you've seen the layout for the Neyland Entertainment District. That thing should be pretty nice. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, Coop, what do you what do you think of Florida when when you look at them on tape? I think they they look really really gifted. You know, there's especially their D line, which is what we look at the front seven. Obviously, with the the D line, the D tackles are are super talented. You know do some good stuff that really jumps out on tape and just, just going to be a really good matchup for us. Really excited and, and, you know, just amped up to, to go out there and have a good test. Maybe, uh, you know, write some wrongs from last week and put a, put a better result out there. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you seem somewhat still maybe angry over last week or hungry just to get back on the field. I don't know. I don't really get, I don't really get it. You know, I kind of stay in the middle. I don't really get too, too angry much. But uh, yeah, I mean, everybody wants to. Everybody wants to put good stuff on tape. Everybody wants to look good, and everybody wants to win. So you know, anytime you don't win in this league, obviously you flush it. But you know, you're eager to get out there the next week and and try to pull out another W. Yeah, you um, you've won the vast majority of, of your games since you've been at Tennessee. But um, I mean, is there a different feel the week after when when you do slip up? Um, there you're saying like, it does it feel different losing. What, what do you mean? Well, just like, I know you, you say flush it, but is there a general tenor that throughout the week is, is maybe things feel a little bit different? Or are you really able to completely flush? It? I mean, I would think it would still be a motivating factor. Um, I don't know. I, I think some stuff can motivate you as far as your performance the week before, but you do, you do have to flush it. I mean, it's at the end of the day, we do the same thing with our wins. You know, you, if you're, if you're still excited on Thursday about a win you had last week, you're going to get your butt kicked on Saturday. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of the same, the same premise. I mean, you're obviously trying to go out there for five days and, you know, do better at the stuff you did wrong, but I don't know if you're still, you know, focused on last week. Yep. Um, now you, you mentioned uh, your, your primary guys are going to be in, in the, interior but what do you think of of florida as far as their their ed ru edge rushing capabilities I, I think they're they're you know up there with the best we've played you know they're really athletic like i said they're talented up front really athletic able to bend the corner and, and press the pocket in the middle like we said um just a lot of stuff jumps out on tape that that makes you want to go out there and play your best you know yep are you guys um and th this came from Ollie Lane, who used to to back you up. Um, do you guys have your? Um, are you guys doing more pulling and that sort of thing than you had before? It's something he mentioned um, about the the offense and how it's evolved over time. Maybe the tackles pull a little bit more, do some more things. That's stuff that I don't think the average fan notices. But is that stuff that you guys are have been doing more over the past, let's say, year and a half? Um, I'm. I mean. Just in general, we we have to pull a lot based off the defenses we see, and you know, just trying to get guys in space. We've got really athletic guys on the edge that, or we feel like we have guys that can really get out there and move really well. So it's something that we try to get better at and and use more. I I've pulled more probably this year than than most times. So um, just trying to if you have some athletic guys, try to get them out on the out on open field and let them work a little bit on some smaller bodies. So I think that's probably what what we've been seeing. How much do you like pulling? Because you have good feet, you're you're quick. Um, I would think you'd have the advantage more times than not when you come rolling around and like, oh, this guy's three hundred plus pounds and he can move. It's it's I, I like doing it. You know, it's a plus for me. I think there's not a lot of guys that can do it, and after doing it, do it well. So um, I like to I like to do it whenever they call it. I mean, it's something that I feel like I can showcase and kind of just you know, show off a little bit of my athleticism. So I'm happy with it. Now, in 
One of the things that I really liked about you guys uh, at, that you said this week is old school coaching would have just said, go out and practice, go out and practice. But Josh Heupel has, has, has told you guys that it really is all still out there for you with the college football playoff. That wasn't the case back when I was your age, which is a long time ago. But I, how how much do you think about, hey, we can still accomplish everything that we had laid out there by just playing great football? I mean, it's, it's just the truth. You know, I don't – I mean, I never really even thought about that because I wasn't, you know, I wasn't really worried about it in that regard. Like you said, I mean – the new scheme of, of college football and the new landscape. There's nobody really going to get out of the SEC probably with no losses. And if it is, it's probably one team, you know, so that, yeah, that's like you said, everything's still out in front of us. I, there's, there's so many reasons to get, to get better every day, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I find myself keeping track of more teams as a player. Do you keep track of more teams and how it could potentially affect your all's future? Uh, no, not not so much. <laughs> I knew you'd see. I knew you would say no, not so much because you you're like the most focused person I know. Uh, I just don't have time for it, man. I mean, like, what what will that really do other than take away time from what I could actually be doing that could help me and us? You know what I'm saying? No, I know completely what you're saying. Uh, and we were having a discussion on social media before we started. And I was talking about how it's a waste of time, and I I have to be involved with that, but. Um, and, and by the way, we remind you that uh, we're brought to you on this social media platform, which is YouTube, and it's brought to you, the Vol Report brought to you by City Heating and Air Conditioning, cityheatandair.com. Over 50 years in experience in East Tennessee, don't trust some fly-by-night HVAC company to say you need a whole new unit when you might just need a little bit of maintenance. So check them out. And I know this is the time that you should go ahead and get that regular maintenance as well. So Tell them that Off the Hook Sports sent you City Heating and Air Conditioning, cityheatandair.com. So in this day and age of college football where there's a 12-team playoff, and honestly, we didn't know until the schedule came out who would be a permanent opponent. I don't know if Florida is going to be a permanent opponent after this, but what would be your thoughts on Florida, whether or not they should be a I'm using air quotes for those on the audio platform, a rival, a year to year opponent. What do you think? I think that would make sense. Um, based off of the history of, of the rivalry, you know, how, how big time it is, I guess. I, th I think it should be, I don't know. Like I kind of was saying, I don't really know. That's so much. I don't even know, man. Super, super above my pay grade. That's for sure. Wow. But I think I do think I do think there are some teams that should be a yearly opponent. No, I I agree completely. I I would assume you would. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Uh, would Alabama be one of those teams too that you would think as an East Tennessee boy like me that uh, they should they should be on the schedule? Yeah, I think that's fair. Gotcha. All right. So as in in terms of. Um, what you hope to accomplish as a unit this week and in terms of improvement, what are what are some of the things that uh, you as a, as a group look to improve on? I would just say uh, play as, as five and focus on our technique and, you know, just finishing. Uh, just keep the quarterback up, keep the backs clean. That's, that's all offensive line play is. That, that leads me to chemistry which I think that you could have five great offensive linemen. If they haven't played together as much as maybe another group, they might not be as great. So how important is, is chemistry? And what I just said, is, is that accurate as far as chemistry on a line and developing that over time? How important is that? Uh, I think it's important. You, you see it, like you said, um, if, five guys that aren't as good play together better yes they could probably be better they can make up for some stuff that they're not as good at just because of the chemistry um but it, at the end of the day whether you've played a long time together or not it's all about on those plays playing together as five you know what i'm saying absolutely absolutely and take me back to two years ago um when you guys beat florida i think that was the first time in five years i believe 
Um, how big was that win, do you think, for the program? I think it was huge. I mean, I think the biggest win that, that year that set all that stuff off was against Pitt. I think that was the biggest thing that kind of set all of it off. But that was that was a big test for us, a big win. But, you know, that 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 year we had, you know, a bunch of big games that, that I felt like were big for the program and, you know, some that we dropped. But there was a lot of games on that on that path that we that we did a good job in. This um this seems like eons ago and I'm glad because you, you were injured for the game last year, but how difficult was that? And you and for those that don't know, you were like down and out, prone position for a lot of the time because of the abdominal issues. But how difficult was that watching your guys? Was it was it almost surreal not being able to to be in Gainesville? Yeah, just upsetting. You know, it's just the same as, you know, any other time that you lose in the SEC against a big time opponent, you know. Doesn't doesn't ever feel good. It never should feel good. And, you know. Yeah. Well, how, I, I mean, you personally, was it frustrating that you, I think you made the trip, right? Yeah, I made the trip. Okay. Just, I mean, how frustrating was it to just sit there and think, man, how much could I help? Uh, I mean, I, I didn't really think about it like that because I knew I couldn't be out there. But, it, I mean, it just sucked that we lost. You know? Yep. Cooper Mays, nice enough to join us each and every week. The Vol Report brought to you by City Heating and Air Conditioning, cityheatandair.com. Coop, do you want to go ahead and give us a score prediction? Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> Wait, that's not – that wouldn't be a good idea. Uh, he is Cooper Mays. I'm Dave Hooker. This has been a presentation. We could start calling it Picks with Coop. No, I'm joking. This has been a presentation of Off the Hook Sports.